Good day everybody, my name is Dr. Mim, YouTube's favourite medical VTuber, and welcome to another episode of WeebMD. <laughs> Today we're going to be watching another episode of Cells at Work, Code Black Baby. Today's episode is titled Forefront Gonococci and Conflicts. That's right, it's sexually transmitted infection time, baby. That's what I've been waiting for. By the way, in case you're new here, I'm a medical doctor working in the UK and we've been watching through this anime. If you've missed an episode so far, there's a playlist at the end of the video, so stick around to catch that. It's starting to seem like a running trend with this anime, but you guys have once again warned me in the comments about what to expect. I thought episode three was bad enough, but apparently it can get worse. Or better, depending on what kind of stuff you're into, I guess. So once again, quick disclaimer, if you're not comfortable hearing words such as penis and vagina and sexually transmitted infections and gonorrhea and probably chlamydia and a bunch of other stuff that we're gonna see, then stop being so sensitive and stick it out till the end, for God's sakes. Let's just jump into it, come on. I'm ready to see those sexy anime germs, come on. <laughs> They're using the term gonococcus here, which is just a way of referring to the bacteria Neisseria gonorrhea. What did you say? It's one of the more common sexually transmitted infections and it causes symptoms such as burning, itching, some abnormal discharge from either the vagina or from the penis. But saying that, about 1 in 10 infected men and about 5 in 10 infected women actually won't have any noticeable symptoms so they can have this infection for long periods of time without even knowing that they have it, which can potentially lead to more long-term effects of having this infection in the body if it's left untreated for a certain amount of time. And that's why it's really important to test yourself regularly and when it's appropriate to, especially if you've had a change of partner recently. So I think what this generic cell is referring to is the incubation period of an infection. Different bacteria and viruses have different incubation periods. An incubation period is basically the amount of time from when you initially get infected to when you actually start showing symptoms of the disease. For example, the incubation period for coronavirus is estimated to be anywhere between 2 and 12 days, which means that after you first come into contact with coronavirus, by day 12, most people who aren't asymptomatic carriers would be showing symptoms at this point. And it's important to note that with a lot of infections, even if you're not yet showing symptoms, symptoms, if you're still only in the incubation phase, you can still spread the disease, you can still be contagious to other people. And this is both true of coronavirus and gonorrhea, so that's why it's really important to never leave your house without your mask or your condoms. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think this is going to turn out well if they just try to fight it themselves. The body's immune system is great at fighting off simple infections, but with things like gonorrhea, if it gets left untreated, it can actually progress to more serious diseases. In women, it can spread up the uterus to the fallopian tubes, it can lead to things like pelvic inflammatory disease, in some cases it can even cause infertility. In men, it can spread through the tubes that your sperm flow through and cause epididymitis, which is inflammation of the epididymis which sits just above the testicles, and again, that can sometimes lead to scarring if it's left untreated for a long time, which could potentially affect fertility in men as well. Okay, so in the last video we mentioned the prostate, it's that walnut-sized gland that sits just below your bladder. And just like any other part of the urinary tract, your prostate can also get infected if you have a sexually transmitted infections such as gonorrhea. Oh, our best friends. How can we forget about our best friends? My favorite cell in cells that work code black so far. I love it and I flipping hate it at the same damn time. Could they have made sperm look a bit cooler with like little guys in rocket ships flying around? Sure. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. I've got, I've got a much better idea. Big stretchy rubber balloon suits. <laughs> that would be much better. <laughs> So lymph nodes can be found all across the body and they're part of the lymphatic system, the main job of which is to transport and drain lymphatic fluid around the body. And as the name suggests, one of the main components of lymphatic fluid are lymphocytes, a type of white blood cell. During infections, when a lot of lymphocytes are being produced and gathering up in the lymph nodes, this causes them to swell and sometimes become quite painful. So for example, during a sexually transmitted infection where the infection is in the lower pelvis area involving the urinary tract, lymph nodes can sometimes swell up and you can actually feel them quite easily during a physical examination, which can be a pretty good indicator that there's an infection going on. 
Uh, just for the record, bacteria don't bleed. Um, that's one thing that this show has consistently got wrong. But hey, it looks cool, right? Being covered in blood with a samurai sword. I could say that cells don't have samurai swords either. But then, where's the fun in that? This is quite a realistic metaphor as to how most of us probably treat our bodies. When we get an infection or we get sick, we expect a body to just sort itself out and get better. Meanwhile, when we're healthy, we don't even bother to eat properly or exercise often enough. Speaking for myself as well here. Come on, guys. Our cells have a hard enough time as it is without us making it even more difficult for them. Come on, look at that face. Do it for her. Do it for sexy white blood cell, Chan. Okay, so yeah, like I mentioned earlier, the epididymis can sometimes get inflamed if you have a sexually transmitted infection as well. In some cases, the actual testicle itself can become infected, in which case this would be called epididymoorchitis. Epididymo referring to inflammation of the epididymis and orchitis referring to inflammation of the testicle. That's right, the medical term for your testicle is orchid. Don't ask me why, Latin is a weird language. <laughs> So proliferation speed is the speed at which a bacteria can increase its numbers within a given time. And bacteria do this in a process called binary fission, where one bacteria cell can split itself into two identical daughter cells. And as you can imagine, this proliferation is an exponential increase. So if you start with one bacterial cell, it can split into two, which can split into four, which can split into eight, 16, 32, etc, etc. And that's why a lot of bacterial infections can proliferate from one cell to millions in a relatively short period of time. <gasps> you can get pus at pretty much any site of infection, whether it's in the skin, in the lungs, in the eyes. But I guess they're in the urethra, so this person has got pus in the urethra, which means that they've definitely got a very active and quite severe infection, which if they don't treat with antibiotics soon, it's just going to get worse at this point. Why is he lonely? Why is he lonely? Who does he miss exactly? Maybe his best friend Chlamydia. <laughs> I don't know. It's definitely not uncommon to pick up multiple sexually transmitted infections at the same time. If you've picked up gonorrhea, it's possible that you've picked up chlamydia as well, or maybe something like genital warts or herpes. If you're getting checked for STIs, it's a good idea to just get checked for all the main or common ones at the same time as well, just in case. <laughs> Macrophage. In reality, um, the macrophage wouldn't be catching the white blood cell and treating her so tenderly and kindly. She'd be eating, eating her. her. She'd, She'd be biting her head, head off. Because that's what they do. They eat dead cells. As we saw in one of the previous episodes, the macrophage ate a red blood cell. She'd be doing the same. They don't discriminate macrophages. They'll eat anything. Just like me during lockdown. So, <laughs> Man, okay, so that's a term that I haven't heard in a long time. The arteria profunda penis, it's basically the deep vein of the penis which supplies the corpus cavernosum. As we saw in last week's episode, the corpus cavernosum is involved in erections. That's right, I did an episode review of an anime that showed erections. If you haven't subscribed now, what are you waiting for? Only the uh, top quality content on this channel, nothing less. <laughs> I'm not going to get as excited about phagocytosis as I did in the previous episodes because, as usual, out of touch me, completely forgot that vor is a thing. And I got so excited the first time I saw this because I was happy that it was medically accurate, but then I realized, oh great, I'm just a guy getting excited seeing women eating things. It's not my fault, okay? Don't judge me. <laughs> Is this the time to censor it? Is this the time to censor it? I don't know. What are the rules? What are the rules? It's medical stuff, but then again, it's Japanese anime with tentacles. What do I do at this point? I don't know. I think I'm going to play it safe and we'll skip to the next scene. <laughs> So 
cell walls are one of the things that can make it really tricky for both the body's immune system and antibiotics to effectively attack bacteria. A lot of antibiotics actually work specifically to attack the cell wall because if the cell wall doesn't get breached, then the rest of the antibiotic is not able to infiltrate into the cell's cytoplasm to attack it effectively. The way that they've depicted the cell wall as armor of the bacteria is actually a pretty good metaphor, pretty good comparison. The tentacles with the mouths on the end of them, however, I feel like maybe that was more of a personal artistic decision. <laughs> In reality, Puss is very dirty. Um, <laughs> as much as his speech is very uplifting and encouraging, Puss is still dirty, all right? It's still dirty. Along with lymphocytes, it also has bacteria matter in it as well, so... Pus is not a good thing to have in your body. Plus, why would you want to keep that inside your body when it's just so satisfying to cut an abscess on someone's skin and just squeeze out that cheese, man? That's That's got to be one of the best perks of being a doctor. <laughs> what the hell is this? Is this going to be a thing that they do every episode now? I'm, I'm not complaining. I love it. That's got to be the best medical pun ever. I have to say... They're really selling this show to me. <laughs> yes! Antibiotics! That's what I've been saying! That's what I've been saying! I'm not gonna lie, it's a bit sad that I'm able to predict the ending of every episode. But then again, it's a little bit reassuring. You know, if I couldn't predict how medical anime would end, what kind of doctor really am I? <laughs> Oh, penicillin, man. Penicillin. The accidental discovery that saved millions of lives and counting. It's unfortunate, however, then, that a lot of people are actually allergic to penicillin. But it's actually one of the most common drugs that people say they're allergic to, but then it turns out they're actually not. If you've ever been told by a family member that you're allergic to penicillin, then just make sure to ask exactly what happened when you took the penicillin. And always, as usual, double check with your doctor before taking anything. That's right, now that the bacteria have lost their cell walls, the body's own immune system can have a much easier time at eating them to death. Oh, yeah, I love, love it. it. I mean, I mean, it's all right. I like it. It's fine. It's fine. It's all right. And there they go, on their final epic journey down the ding dong, into the toilet to be flushed away and never seen again. What a beautiful end. There it is, guys. That was episode four of Cells at Work Code Black. I don't know what you guys were so worried about. I mean, I may have cut out some of the more suggestive tentacle scenes, but I mean, it was okay. It was fine, right? You two, please don't age restrict this video. Anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy this reaction to the Cells at Work episode. If you did, please do let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below as well. I pretty much read and respond to every single comment on these videos, so I'd love to hear from you guys. I'm also live on Twitch on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at about 9 or 10 p.m. UK time. Gaming videos coming to the main channel as well. Well, maybe one of these days. I don't know. I don't know. Do you want it? If you want it, let me know in the comments below. Until next time, everybody, stay safe and healthy. Take care of yourselves out there. Catch you later. Peace.